for a limited time, $1 gets you full access to all the automotive industry news and content CBTNews.com has to offer. CBT News. Subscribe today. Welcome to CBT News with Bridget Fitzpatrick. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to CBT News. I'm Bridget Fitzpatrick. Thank you so much for joining us. Today on Inside Automotive, we're joined by President of Charge Enterprises, Mark Leneve. But first, here are today's top stories. Yesterday, Cox Automotive unveiled its first quarter dealer sentiment index, which reported a sudden shift towards optimism after the end of Q4. Although retailers continue to say that the car market is at its weakest point since 2020, outlooks on the upcoming quarter were 11 points higher than in December, the first positive change since Q1 of last year. Despite the change in attitude, overall scores still declined year over year as dealers recorded declining profits and near record-breaking operating costs. Up next, on Thursday, J.D. Power published its Customer Service Index Report for 2023, revealing that overall satisfaction had declined year over year for the first time in nearly three decades. Average survey scores ranked two points lower than in 2022, which J.D. Power analysts attribute to increased wait times, recall frustration, and inadequate EV service. Lexus led all other brands in buyer satisfaction for the second consecutive year, while Mitsubishi placed first in the mass market category. Study participants continued to give lower scores to Ford and Hyundai as both brands face years at or near the bottom of the list. After encountering months of international criticism over his administration's Inflation Reduction Act, President Biden is set to enter talks with the President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, to discuss a potential solution. The two leaders are expected to negotiate a free trade deal between the U.S. and the EU, which would give foreign automakers access to EV-related tax credits in the legislation. Since the bill's passing, lawmakers in multiple countries have expressed concern that the IRA's domestic sourcing requirements would lead companies to relocate their operations to North America. And wrapping up our coverage, automakers are now paying close attention to a new tech startup which hopes to make holographic head-up displays available for upcoming vehicles as soon as 2023. The devices would use projection, augmented reality, and holographic technology to provide clear eye-level information on the car's windshield. GM is among several big-name brands investing millions into the company and will feature the system in its 2024 Cadillac Lyric, production of which is expected to start this month. Don't go anywhere. Coming up next is president of Charge Enterprises, Mark Leneve. We'll be right back. Join the number one most watched newscast in the automotive industry. CBT News. Subscribe today. President Joe Biden's administration made a significant investment into the nation's infrastructure, which included funding for electric vehicle charging. On this episode of Inside Automotive, we're continuing the EV conversation, and we're joined by President of Charge Enterprises and former GM Ford and Volvo executive Mark Leneve. And he's going to give us his perspective on what this means for the industry moving forward. Check it out. It seems to be the, the biggest concern that consumers have is the availability to charge this range anxiety that we hear so much about. However, that being said, recently uh, there has been a huge spike in the interest of consumers to buy EVs here in the last quarter. Uh, talk to us about that. It seems as though that that the the, the anxiety we hear so much about might be kind of fading away as these new beautiful models hit showrooms and uh, and are on the horizon. With that coupled with the fact that we're we're seeing companies like GM that are bringing out a thirty thousand dollar EV, so there's a lot of things happening in EV that are very uh, attractive to today's consumer, right? Correct. And and I think like any tech uh, evolution, well, you know, you could go back with smartphones and you know a whole host of things. Home computers. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. early, exactly. You know, yeah. desktop. You get you get the early adopters. And then if the technology really provides a great consumer benefit, then it explodes. And the arc sure. is kind of out. And right. I think we're going to see that with EVs. Uh, you know, the times I've driven them, 
it's a, just a great experience. You know, and I, yeah. I was, you know, I test drove every Tesla, uh, the Ford mach the Ford Lightning, when it was just in a prototype. And they're sure. fantastic vehicles. It's a great experience. Uh, but people worry about range anxiety. Now, I think the vehicles have been so expensive that to this point, it's been a second or third vehicle for a family. They also have a, an internal, you know, combustion engine vehicles as part of their household fleet. When yeah. it's your only vehicle that you have to get to work, you have to make trips in, then range anxiety is going gonna, is gonna to come into play. That's why putting in the infrastructure of adequate charging at, you know, convenient, safe locations for customers is so critical. The other right. thing that, that I've talked about, Jim, is that I think there was this misperception, in my opinion, because Tesla didn't have dealers and they were the first ones out there in mass with EVs that the EV customer didn't want to do business with a dealer. I think that's nonsense. It's just Tesla had a product probably 10 years ahead of the market. And the only way you could buy it was direct from Tesla. I think they would have been just as successful with the, you know, 100, 200 dealers in, in good locations around the country. And I think the traditional OEMs and some of the new players coming in that are going to have dealers, of course, are going to do just as well, if not better uh, with EVs because they'll have a, somebody locally they can go to for questions, service, software upgrades and reflashes and trade-ins and financing and all the stuff that a dealer has done great for customers for more than a century. So I'm, I'm really, you know, uh, very fundamentally, um, you know, advocate for the dealer body. And, and, and I don't believe their, <clears throat> their business model is, is that threatened by EVs. I think they'll do terrific with EVs. All right, be sure to watch this interview in its entirety right here at cbtnews.com. That wraps up our show for today, but we invite you to join us back here again tomorrow morning for all the latest news and trends impacting the retail automotive industry. And be sure to follow us on TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Bridget Fitzpatrick. Thanks for watching and have a great day. CBT News, your number one resource for auto industry news and content. Delivering the news dealers count on for 10 years. Subscribe today and join thousands of other automotive professionals. CBT News, 10 years strong.